What you see here is a butthead. But don't look away just yet because locomotives like these paved the way for the diesels we see today. Coming up, we'll take a brief look at the evolution of the diesel electric switcher and try to figure out why we don't see them much these days on class one railroads. Plus, will the buttheads of the future run off batteries? All that and more is next. The yellow engine here is owned by RailServe Inc. and works on President's Island in Memphis, Tennessee. Number 2537 was built for the Southern Pacific back in 1969, and its cab number boards still appear to feature the SP font. This one is an Electromotive Division SW1500, and it's ideally suited for what it's doing. High tractive effort, low speed starts and stops, and hours of pulling and shoving cars, plus plenty of visibility for the engineer. But these days, buttheads or end cab switchers are just about extinct on the large class one railroads. For many years, small steam engines were used to move cars from track to track and rail yards. These machines would spend their days making up the trains that would go from city to city hauled by larger engines. Steam switchers were relatively small compared to the bigger road locomotives. They often had low profile tenders for better visibility when going backwards. Because of their slow operating speeds, these engines did not have leading or trailing trucks which larger locomotives needed for stability. In addition to railroads, many industries also relied on switchers to move cars around their vast facilities. The little switcher here is hauling cars that are dumping molten slag. But new technology would soon phase out these small steam engines and yard switchers powered by steam would be the first to go. Since the beginning of the 20th century, innovators in the rail industry had toyed with internal combustion engines being used to power rail cars and locomotives. Self-propelled rail cars had been in use since the early 1900s, but they couldn't pull much. Box cab locomotives built by companies like GE and Alco followed in the 1920s. And in the 30s, trains like the Zephyr and EMC's, later EMD's E-units were getting a lot of publicity. But these were passenger locomotives that didn't need to pull heavy freight trains. Big steam engines were still what railroads used for that. But in yards and industrial facilities, small diesel switchers were proving to be a good investment. They were low maintenance and didn't need to stop for coal or water. They also didn't create all that smoke, which was becoming a problem some cities like New York and Chicago were cracking down on. In the era of steam, switchers were often the first type of diesel locomotive a railroad would purchase. And the design that was settled on by many manufacturers was a hood in the front and a cab at the end. Those manufacturers included longtime builders of steam locomotives like Alco or the American Locomotive Company, Baldwin, and Lima, which in 1947 became the Lima Hamilton Corporation. Meanwhile, General Electric had become well known in the 1940s for its center cab switchers. But G also had butthead designs in production. Ultimately, switchers from various manufacturers worked for many years in rail yards and at industries. They were the backbone of rail operations at Bethlehem Steel in Pennsylvania. This place had quite an interesting fleet. How about this center cab Whitcomb switcher? And by the way, Whitcomb would eventually become a subsidiary of Baldwin. The plant even had a broad gauge electric railroad that used Larry cars to carry iron ore from storage to the blast furnaces. So if these end cab switchers were so reliable and resilient, why were they replaced and what replaced them? Well, believe it or not, bigger engines known as road switchers. Road switchers have hoods that cover the engine and other components, plus walkways on all sides. This gives the crew decent visibility going in either direction. 
Number 7016, a Canadian Pacific Heritage Unit, is a modern EMD SC70 ACU with a wide nose safety cab up front. Long before it was built, road switchers, also called hood units like this GP7, replaced cab units which were fully enclosed. Cab units had poor visibility when going in reverse, and that made it hard for freight crews to do any kind of switching along the route. Of course, the road switchers that came before this modern EMD were smaller and are now being used for yard work, transfer duties, and to run on locals as railroads standardized their fleets. CSX 1701 and 1703 are both rebuilt road switcher locomotives. When they were first built, they would have led long-haul freight trains. But today, they're working a short-distance transfer job where they pick up cars from one yard here in Atlanta and bring them to another yard on the other side of town. Their trip actually takes them under the streets of downtown. These are very versatile machines. You'll often see them assigned to switching duties at CSX's Howe's Yard in Atlanta, sometimes with an engineer in the cab or under remote control. The story is very much the same nearby at Norfolk Southern's Inman Yard. Rebuilt six-axle locomotives, some mated with a slug. Basically, a former locomotive that's had its engine removed and relies on electricity provided by the mother unit it's connected to to power its traction motors. You'll also see slightly smaller four-axle GP or general purpose units out here too. But the scene was a little different several decades ago when these aerial pictures were taken, most likely in the 1970s. Those GPs or Jeeps were leading freight trains and in-cab switchers were mated with slugs. But don't confuse this cabless thing with a slug. Over the years, some railroads used cow-calf sets where both units had a diesel engine. You know, that's the beauty of diesel locomotives. You can add additional horsepower by hooking them together, and all those engines can be controlled by one operator. Okay, so this was actually a power move, and not all these engines were running, but still an impressive sight. Back at Howell's yard, something unexpected, a butthead. This one, along with another in-cab switcher, spend most of their time these days not far away at CSX's Ready Center in Atlanta, training the next generation of engineers and conductors. The facility, which includes this sharp-looking caboose at the entrance, sits next to what's left of CSX's Tilford Yard. This used to be a bustling place where you'd catch all kinds of engines, including buttheads. I took this picture back in 2016. This particular model, the MP15T, was the last of the in-cab switchers made by EMD. It was built for the Seaboard system in 1984. The last MP15T was outshopped in 1987. Later model butthead switchers like this former MP15DC rebuilt into an MP15E featured EMD's Blomberg trucks which were capable of higher speeds than the AAR Type A trucks found on earlier yard engines. This made units like these a bit more versatile as they could handle jobs outside of the yard which was appealing to some railroads. Arguably the most iconic buttheads to ever roam the rails were the ones used for many years by NASA down in Florida. So where can you still see these now iconic butthead switchers? Well, they're not all that uncommon if you know where to look. Some short lines around North America keep them on their rosters. They often don't need locomotives capable of higher speeds. Another place you may see one is on a transit system. This one is operated by the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority. It was made by GE and has a low profile design to allow it to operate in underground subway tunnels. I don't recall ever seeing this one run, but I have seen this unusual beast in action. Unfortunately, I have very little information about it. I think it's French, as Marta's first rail cars were actually made in France. Now, 
Meanwhile, industrial operations also still use end cab switchers, although many facilities are now using smaller mobile rail car movers. This is called a track mobile. As you can see, it's perfectly capable of pulling a cut of cars on flat track. It can also be taken off the rails and moved using its rubber tires. Shuttle wagons are another form of mobile rail car mover in use today. This is actually what NASA now uses at the Kennedy Space Center. Fortunately, one of its buttheads was preserved by the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami. And yeah, many switchers have been preserved and still operate on tourist railroads and at museums. In addition to the GE 50 tonner we saw earlier, the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia also has this butthead, an EMD SW7 built in the early 1950s. So what does the future look like? Well, in this case, it doesn't look like a diesel road switcher. Of course, this thing used to have a diesel engine, but it now runs off batteries. It's operated by U.S. Steel and was rebuilt by Innovative Rail Technologies. And this promotional video shows it in action. In a press release, U.S. Steel said it spent $2.3 million converting two of its diesel switchers to battery power. The rest of the cost was offset by a grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. This thing is pretty cool, but I don't know if battery power is the solution for mainline locomotives just yet, but yards and industrial facilities are probably a good place to begin testing the technology. Whether you call them buttheads or end cab switchers, there's no doubt these machines are historically significant. I'm eventually planning to record the Sandersville Railroad here in Georgia where they're known for their fleet of end cab switchers. Is there a place that you know of that still uses these things? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.